All right, everybody, welcome in to another episode of the NFL Seekers podcast. Today, we're going to be giving 2024 New Year's resolutions for every team in the NFL. We'll kind of go over each team and kind of give their biggest need going into 2024, our biggest wish for, for each team. This will be a pretty fun one, a different one than our, our usual kind of takeaway format episode. So I'm, I'm excited for this one. How are you, Josh? Doing good. Um, how was your New Year's, Dan? It was good. It was good. We we, we were really uh, chill over here. We we went to bed early. We we, we were boring. How was <laughs> it? I, I, I would say the same. Yeah, I texted you at like 9 o'clock, and I think you're already asleep. So Dan definitely didn't get his New Year's kiss or his New Year's celebration at 12 o'clock. He was definitely sound asleep, as was I. I, I definitely heard the fireworks. Um, I went to bed early, had work in the morning, so... Um, we got to bed early over here in the store's household. Yeah, I'm, I'm so boring that I honestly forgot it was New Year's. <laughs> it was just a, a, a normal day for us. So yeah, I, I totally forgot. I'm boring. New Year's Day did have some good college games, though. We got to see the Michigan, Alabama, and the Washington, Texas game. That was that, that was pretty exciting. So New Year's Day was awesome. It had it was was full of it was full of fun football. Yeah, electric college football playoff games. I'm so excited for our draft content and our off-season content. This this uh, draft class is going to be really fun. So I'm really excited for it. And let's let's just get into it. We got uh, 32 teams to kind of give a, a takeaway for a uh, off-season uh, wish for a, a resolution for. So we'll we'll kind of do it in the format of of how the games went last week. We'll we'll do like a takeaway. Uh, a normal takeaway episode format. So we'll start it off with the Browns since they won on Thursday night football. And I, I think they've got a pretty obvious um, a New Year's re resolution, and that's just figuring out their quarterback position. They, I think their resolution is kind of just figuring out if, if they do have a battle, if if they want to stick with Flacco, if they want to go back to Watson. I think that's a very interesting discussion. I guess, obviously, the playoffs, uh, how, how the rest of the season plays out will really kind of decide that but I, I think that is kind of the biggest question and for the Browns I don't really think they have any like negative flaws or anything they any holes they really need to fill they I mean they might have the coach of the year like this Browns team is locked and loaded and I think they just need to figure out who's who's their quarterback moving forward really yeah I was gonna say for a new year's resolution for the Browns I mean 11 and 5 playing with your fourth quarterback is pretty amazing that just shows the talent of your front office and and your whole team with really no weaknesses and your depth is absolutely incredible. So there's not a big New Year's resolution besides we got to figure out who the Browns starting quarterback is going forward, whether whether they should sign Flacco longer, whether Deshaun Watson, who they gave the $200 million guarantee to, is their future. Um, but, yeah, our New Year's resolution is just clarity with, with who's our quarterback moving forward and who do we trust moving forward. So just a direction in the sense of a quarterback. But, I mean, pretty much everything else for the Browns is is, is pretty much flawless at this point. Um, incredible organization, incredibly built, which is just crazy saying that from what the Browns have been in the past, you know, decade. Yeah, they're they're one of the 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 organizations that's just sitting the prettiest right now, looking towards the future. Their their front office are just smiling because they're really sitting pretty. And and yeah, what would you do? Would you stick with uh, Watson the way he was playing at the beginning of the season? Would you ride with the Flames with Flacco? I mean, obviously, like I said, the playoffs will kind of decide this. So I, I don't know if they maybe win one playoff game they win their wild card game, uh, lose in the second round. Do you think they roll with Flacco next year, or what do you think they do? I think you sign Joe Flacco to a, to a veteran minimum type deal for whatever you can for the quarterback position. And I think you move into, you know, training camp and the off season and in a, stu in a, in a true starting battle, obviously you want to roll with Deshaun Watson if you can, but you know, you should have Joe Flacco, I, I believe as a contingency plan moving forward. Cause I mean, Joe Flacco has proved that he should be the starter right now and he's played better football than Deshaun Watson has. Yeah, I agree. You kind of just make it a competition, a, a very open competition. And, and yeah, it would bring the best out of both of them. And I, I think when you uh, go with the opposite team here with the New York Jets who lost to the Browns on Thursday night, I, I think they have the complete opposite New Year's resolution. And that's just, um, you know, you, you didn't have that quarterback position figured out. And now you've got Aaron Rodgers coming in. So that is it's going to be interesting for their takeaways. It sounds like uh, you got Joe Douglas and um Robert Sala coming back. So I don't know. I guess this Jets team is just going to need to reload with more weapons because Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall is your entire offense won't be able to get it done. You need 
a good arsenal of weapons. You need depth on your offense. It can't just be two players uh, against the world. So I think my Jets New Year's resolution, other than, you know, signing a Flacco type backup quarterback, maybe, um, and probably firing your head coach would be uh, just adding more weapons because that defense is locked and loaded. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with that hundred percent. And I'm going to go on a little different route for, for my new year's resolution for the jets. I just, I want to see some competency. I want to see some true confidence in that organization. I want to see a real leader and I want it to be pretty, you know, defiant on like what's going on and, and who's the starter and who's our backup. And, you know, we're, and I want it to be, I want clarity. And um, that's, that's most likely what I would like to see from the jets. Obviously, um, from the draft side of things, I would probably like to see them, you know, sign another tackle, um, whether they can find one in free agency or draft one. And yeah, obviously add some more weapons, but I just want to see clarity and stuff from the quarterback position. I want some confidence from that position. I think that would be pretty much the difference for this organization. Yeah. Relying on a, what, 39 year old Aaron Rodgers coming off that injury would be, would be silly at this point. You need a very competent backup quarterback. We've been screaming at the jets since week two to sign Joe Flacco. This game right here literally embodied um, why the jets need a change in the front office, really a change on the coaching position, just a change in the way they look at things. Uh, they need a lot of changes and we've been pointing at it since week two, they needed to sign Flacco. They would have been a playoff team. They would have been the, Cleveland Browns at the Jets sign Flacco they would be the Cleveland Browns right now so it's just it's it's clear and obvious it, it, Thursday night proved that point and I, I think we could probably move off this one uh, anything else you want to say no that's you pretty much hit the nail on the hammer with that one and I agree from from all sides yeah, and Browns for the draft you you don't have any needs you guys are just going to draft best player available like you have been the few last few years and you're kind of hitting on all your picks the Browns are just a fun team great ran organization it's fun uh the, the turnaround they've made and we'll, we'll go on to the, the the Saturday night football game the Lions and Cowboys play the Cowboys won by one point so we'll start with them and I don't know. I think my my biggest wish for this team for 2024 is honestly a competent uh, replacement or not replacement, but a competent complement for Tony Pollard. I think if he could get a, a Zeke type running back in there, ironically, uh, that's what they need to to kind of elevate this offense to elevate Pollard. I think he needs that complement um, for his game. So I honestly think uh, with their defense playing the way it is, they have a lot of weapons. I think that might just be their biggest need. Yeah, no, that's that's honestly that. If you, and I'm on as I as we're as we're doing this podcast, I, I have PFF pulled up for every team's biggest positional needs, and the Cowboys is running back. And Tony Pollard proved that he really isn't a bell cow running back, and he thrived with with a Zeke Elliott type running back. So yeah, I mean, I would love to see this team add through the draft a bigger type back, maybe like a Donovan Edwards from Michigan. I think would be really exciting. Um, somebody who's a bigger bruiser. I think that would be my New Year's wish for this team. And maybe to try and get a little bit younger. Um, also, maybe look for, you know, Brandon Cooks is your obviously your wide receiver too. He's getting up there in age. It's probably time to start looking for a contingency plan and a true wide receiver too behind C.D. Lamb. And also, um, I don't know. I just, it's going to be interesting. I want, I think the coaching is going to be very interesting to see how the Cowboys go this off season. Um, and I'm going to throw this out as kind of a hot take, but, Mike McCarthy, if he doesn't win a playoff game, could be a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky fire candidate. He could be on the hot seat if he doesn't if he, if they don't put up in the playoffs this year. And so, I think I think this off season will get a little clarity from what their coach position is, whether it's Dan Quinn promoted, whether Mike McCarthy is still there. But I think honestly, my New Year's resolution for this team, outside of adding a few skill position, is is to win a playoff game and to prove that you belong and that you're one of the better teams in the NFL because. We have not seen this Cowboys team be successful, you know, come January football. Yeah, they kind of have looked like they've taken that jump um, from past year's Cowboys team. So hopefully they can definitely, you know, win a few playoff games, get to the NFC Championship at least and be very competitive. That That's the type of roster they have. So if they can't get that done, then we do need to have another talk about McCarthy. But yeah, he, he has had a pretty impressive season. So hopefully they can get some playoff wins and get that out of the way and and yeah I, I do agree honestly I do think if they drafted a receiver in the first or second round that could definitely benefit this team that might be like they're the best way to go in the first round for this team I think that would be uh perfect because Jalen Tolbert hasn't really been great but yeah I mean other than that this roster is, is honestly really stacked and just the talent is is off the charts so there's not a lot a lot to nitpick at 
but you know, but a few positions and, and honestly come January football, you know, playoff football, we gotta, that's, that's my new year's wish is to, is to, is to see improvement in that area. And and for the Lions, we'll, we'll move on to the other team. For the Lions, I think it just has to be any secondary help possible. I, I think it has to be anything on the defense to help them. Their run defense has been pretty great, so it, it just has to be any pass defense help, any safety, corner, anything in the secondary to help them. Uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson was a good addition. He, he's really uh, injury-prone, but you need more corners. You need lockdown corners. Uh, you, you need less injury-prone guys back there. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think you got Brian Brantz and Chauncey Gardner Johnsons who who are, you know, your two bona fide stars. Other than that, you need secondary help. So yes, um, I think we need to overload in the secondary. That's gonna be my New Year's resolution is overload in the secondary, whether it's free agency, whether it's the draft, you know, whether you're able to get a Cooper DeGene, a Kool-Aid McKistry. Um, I mean, there's there's quite a bit. Nate Wiggins, there's a lot of good corners and, and secondary in this draft. So I think I think you load up. I think when it comes to free agency, I think you sign one or two. And I think in the draft, you draft, you know, at least three defensive back players. And I think that is just obviously it's shown that's the Lions Achilles heel is their secondary and their pass defense. And that's why teams are able to put up points against them. I mean, that's why the Lions are, you know, 13 wins. Um, I mean, they could they could easily be 13, 14 wins if it wasn't for their secondary. And I, I, another thing for the Lions, I'm interested to see who they replace uh, Ben Johnson with because they're they're going to have to replace him. That's going to be a very interesting hire because it's going to have to be someone pretty competent. Um, they, they need a new play caller that's going to you know fill in for like one of the better play callers in the NFL. So that will be an interesting one and one that you've kind of been calling for as well. Another need is a wide receiver too. I feel like uh, r- rolling with Khalif Raymond and Josh Reynolds isn't really the move. They need a, a bona fide wide receiver too. If they can get a first rounder. A, receiver opposite of Amon Ra, that'd be so fun. Yeah, and I'll just throw out a name for you. Brian Thomas Jr. should be available around that range. They're picking at 27 as of right now. Um, you can also get a Keon Coleman, a Donier Mitchell from Texas, who had an outstanding game last night. Um, there should be some pretty exciting names the Lions fans should be watching out for, you know, come that 27th overall pick in the draft. Yeah, someone like Keon Coleman get a like bigger Megatron type receiver for the Lions would be so fun. But we'll we'll, we'll move on to the Sunday games. We'll start with the uh, Dolphins and Ravens game. <laughs> the Ravens uh, took care of business at home, fifty six to nineteen. So we'll start with them first. And I mean, just the definition of an MVP uh, performance from Lamar. We'll get that out of the way. Lamar Jackson has kind of secured MVP, his second MVP of his career. No correct, no question, really. He was 18 of 21, 321 yards, five touchdowns, a perfect one, 58.3 passer rating. He was just flawless, and the Ravens kind of clinched being the best team in the NFL. So uh, 2024 uh, wish list for them is kind of just the Super Bowl. They're kind of the favorite to win the Super Bowl, kind of the best team in the NFL right now. Not really much that we can wish for. I think my my wish for them is going to be uh, Mike, McDan- Mike McDonald staying as defensive coordinator somehow not getting a head coaching job and, and just kind of retaining this team because this team is a juggernaut. Yeah, that's kind of funny. You, um, Those were exactly my New Year's resolution is win the Super Bowl and keep Mike McDonald as defensive coordinator and and run it back next year too because um, this team is built pretty perfectly. I mean, if I was to be nitpicky, um, I would want a better wide receiver too or another wide receiver too, maybe something somebody that complements Zay Flowers' skill set a little bit better. I think Odell Beckham Jr. is just a lower mid-level receiver at this point, and he's pretty old, and and he's not slow, but he, he he's definitely slowing down from his prime. He, he's, he's out of his prime at this point. We can confidently say that. So, I mean, if we're, if we're you know, getting a wish list, um, you know, for the Ravens, I would say a good wide receiver two or maybe even a wide receiver one to take over that role from Zay Flowers and Zay Flowers be the wide receiver two. But, yeah, it's it's Super Bowl and and find a way to throw the bag at Mike McDonald. Yeah, I, I really can't think of, like, many, like, draft needs. Like, you know, they always draft best player available. It's what the Ravens do. They load up on draft picks and talent during the draft. They always hit their picks. So, I don't really have too many uh, New Year's resolutions for the Ravens. I can't be judging that team, if I'm being honest. They're kind of ran perfectly right now. For the Dolphins, I, I think one would be just figuring out how to get over that uh, Buffalo Bills hump. I think that's kind of their biggest crippling flaw right now. We'll, we'll see what happens Sunday night, but the Bills kind of just 
for some reason have the Dolphins number. So I would say somehow figuring out the Bills would be their biggest uh, 2024 thing to figure out. And then, I don't know, roster-wise, it, it's hard to figure out why they're losing these big games um, to good teams. I I mean, you, you lost 56-19. to 19. Uh, It's it's kind of unexcusable. And when you look at their roster, you can't really point to anything. Their defense has been playing pretty solid. Uh, Fangio's been doing good before this Ravens game. So I don't – I'm kind of struggling to come up with a – with a, a wish for for the Dolphins, a, a resolution. I don't know. What about I think you? my resolution is just to find more steady and consistent football. I kind of feel like this team, for being eleven and five, is kind of an emotional roller coaster. And maybe that stems from the coaching staff. I don't know. Maybe it stems from the culture. They just don't really have that. I I wouldn't say they have a very good coaching staff and a very good culture, but I wouldn't say they have that you know, John Harbaugh type culture where it's just steady and consistent always. And so my New Year's resolution for the Dolphins is is going to be simple. It's it's to it's to play consistent. And you know, you know, they'll have games where they beat somebody by 70 or they'll have games where they lose by 70. Um obviously they're on the winning side of things and things are trending upwards towards the broad or you know upwards on the on the scale. But other than that, yeah, it's just play consistent football. And, you know, probably find a little bit better help on your offensive line. Look for a better tight end. Um, but outside of that, it's, I mean, these teams are both built really well and have really good coaching staffs. But, yeah, if we're being nitpicky for the Dolphins, it's it's finding that consistency, you know, on offense and defense and improving on, you know, your, your tight end and offensive line play. Even though I feel like their players are outperforming what they should be, but maybe adding a little bit better skill set through the draft for the Dolphins yeah you're right we are being nitpicky with both these you know kind of juggernaut teams but yeah for the Dolphins I, I agree it would kind of be maybe adding another um, really good offensive lineman in there uh, a tight end could be nice someone not Durham Smythe is your tight end one I know they don't really use tight end but yeah I think getting like a George Kittle in there could really elevate this offense so not obviously George Kittle but you know what I mean someone like a tight end that can kind of do it all like George Kittle so I do think that there are some things that can really help this Dolphins team. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the, the next game. The Saints uh, beat the Buccaneers. So we'll start off with them. Really big win for their uh, NFC South chances. It's The NFC South is completely up in the air now with uh, one week to go. So it's going to be really exciting to see what happens. But I, I, I guess we'll see how the season plays out. But personally, I think the Saints' biggest New Year's resolution has to be getting away from this Derek Carr contract. It has to be getting away from Derek Carr he, he's he's he kind of heated up um, down the stretch but not really he's you know like Kamara and Olave had a really really bland game last week in the you know and they still won so it's just like kind of just gross football you're not excited about it I, I think Derek Carr can definitely be replaced by a lot of options and it, it would be better I think maybe just starting new for the Saints just bringing more young uh, more exciting higher potential options in there like going all in for Ben Johnson personally would be fun for me like I, I don't really know if I want to retain Dennis Allen and Derek Carr again so personally for me it would just be kind of restarting going for more upside going for a, a Ben Johnson and a young quarterback that's kind of what I would do yeah um I 100% agree uh, I think the Saints have probably been the team that has kicked the can down the road the longest and they keep, you know, contract restructures, you know, max restructures every single year. They're finding new ways to to keep kicking the can down the road for their, um, you know, for their for their roster. And they're trying to keep this team because I mean, they and, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. They believe that they're competitive and, you know, they believe that they can go win a Super Bowl. But, yeah, I think I think. I think they've bitten a, a little too much off and they can chew. So at this point, I think it's time for a hard reset. And I honestly, yeah, you 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 messed up. You shouldn't have signed Derek Carr. You signed him to a four-year, $150 million contract, which is just outrageous. Um, and I think, I don't know how his contract is set up, but the soonest that you can get out of it, you cut him. I think you cut him and you move on. And I think that's the same thing with a lot of their big players. I think they need to do a hard reset like the Rams did. And I think you should... You know, I think you should be cutting all your old, you know, your Cam Jordans because you're not a, you're not you're not going to win the Super Bowl, with Derek Carr. You're not going to win the Super Bowl with this roster. It's kind of confirmed, but you want to keep your young pieces if you can retain them. Your cheaper contracts, you know, um, kind of your meat and potatoes of the roster, 
and you want to move on from these older, bigger contracts. And they need to stop kicking the can down the road. And that's what they need to do starting right now. And so that's my New Year's resolution is let's let's have a hard reset because that's kind of the point where we're at at the end of the season is we need a hard reset. All right, we both agree for the Saints. And I think personally for the Buccaneers, when I watch the Buccaneers, it's just secondary, secondary, secondary for me. I think I've been really impressed with their offense this year. Their offensive line has been honestly pretty solid all around. They could maybe add in a piece. But when I when I look at this Bucks team, when I watch them, I, I think it's secondary. They need like a, a solidified number one corner. If they could get like a Kool-Aid McKinstry type corner in the draft, that would be really huge to kind of compliment Antoine Winfield back there. He can't do it all. So I, I really think they need some lockdown corners bad in Tampa. And then, um, I mean, I, I'm fine with Baker. I'm fine rolling with Baker for another year. Uh, I know a lot of Tampa fans want Penix. So you, you could definitely say – that he's kind of a dream um, to maybe, you know, even sit behind Baker for a year. That would be incredible. Uh, he grew up in Tampa. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that could be a second one, too. Yeah, it's kind of hard, honestly, for the Buccaneers. It's kind of hard what I what I want them to do because I guess I just – I don't really know. Um, they are a very star-studded team. Their roster is kind of built interestingly. They can compete with anyone, but I don't feel like they're good enough to get over the hump. But also, I feel like Baker's good enough but I don't feel like he's great enough. And so it's kind of just an awkward situation I feel like Tampa's in right now. Um, obviously, you're kind of in the, essentially the rebuilding years from, you're in a, I would say you're right now, you're in a competitive rebuild for the, for the Buccaneers. You have enough talent, you have a competitive quarterback, but at the same time, you just got to kind of figure it out. And I think you got to figure out if you're going to roll with Baker, how you're going to build this team. Um, but it's kind of hard to have a, have a resolution for them. I guess that I'll see more at the end of this season and we can kind of assess from there. But obviously I think, you know, from a, from a roster building standpoint, I mean, a tight end, a guard secondary is probably, you know, on our, on our new year's wish list. but it's, it's kind of hard to really have a definitive one for this team. Cause they're just kind of in an awkward, I would say competitive rebuild and they're going to have an awkward draft spot where they're not going to be picking super high. They're going to be in that twenties range. So they're not going to get any great talent, um, but it's going to be interesting. And it's, I would kind of curious to see what their cap situations like this year. I mean, dropping this game, honestly, is really depressing for the Buccaneers. I mean, maybe another wish would just be winning this division. Um, still, even after dropping this game, it, sucks losing this game uh, they still lead the division but it's pretty much all tied so it all comes down to this week so um yeah maybe winning the division would be a another fun one you know baker really keeps you in a really competitive rebuild so it, it could be a really fun season um in the end for either yeah. team, really and so their cap they actually have really good cap in in 2024 so they have 78 million dollars in projected cap space heading into 2024 um i know baker um, his contract, um, I'll tell you real quick, is kind of interesting. Um, I think he signed a one-year prove-it deal. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong, but let me hurry and just confirm it. I honestly forgot if Baker was a one-year deal or not. Let's see. Okay, so Baker Mayfield is on a one-year deal worth up to four million dollars. So he signed a really cheap contract. Wow. So, so he's he's gonna he's gonna demand obviously yeah so you got to decide what you're gonna if you're gonna roll with baker moving forward so yeah he kind of signed he signed a one-year prove it deal um and i would say he's kind of proved it and they have plenty of cap space to sign baker it's just if you want to tie your eggs up in that basket so clarity theirs is much needed yeah i think you have to to retain baker even if you draft a quarterback i think you have to retain baker no matter what after the season and We'll go on to the next one. Uh, the the Raiders went into Indy and lost to the Colts in the close one. And we'll we'll start with the Colts for their uh, for their New Year's resolution. I think you know it's just getting Anthony Richardson acclimated with with all these receivers. Maybe getting him some more help. Uh, I think the offensive line still does need help. It's improved this year, but you know Quentin Johnson or not Quentin Johnston, uh, Nelson. Geez, what's his name? I, I don't even remember his name anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin Nelson. Quentin Nelson. Gee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fallen off so bad that I literally forgot his name. He's he's really not been a great uh star guard anymore. So I, I do think that the the Colts kind of just need, you know, more protection around Anthony Richardson, more tackle help, more uh just weapons all around. They're they're definitely starting to build that weapon core with Josh Downs and you know, uh getting Jonathan Taylor in there. But I think they need to retain those players and, and just get some more uh, electricity in there for 
for Anthony Richardson and just make sure he stays healthy because that, that's got to be the biggest priority is Anthony Richardson and maybe uh, coaching him up to not run as much and yeah, just protecting Anthony Richardson, uh, making sure he succeeds. Yeah, hundred percent. And honestly, just adding maybe more stars. I don't know. I mean, they do have some star set of players with DeForest Buckner, um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball and Jonathan Taylor, you could argue is a star and Michael Pittman's a star, but maybe a few more stars. I feel like they're, I think they actually do have really good depth on their roster. Um, but yeah, if you could find some more clarity with the offensive line, protect Anthony Richardson it is, is the number one new year's goal is keep your quarterback upright, keep him healthy for a season, whether that's teaching him how to slide, teaching him how to get out of bounds, not take the hits. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously it's going to be developing Anthony Richardson and getting that rapport with all the receivers and, and just adding to this team. Just adding some more stars for Anthony Richardson on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball, and honestly, competing for the South. You know, you got you got you're you got to be seriously. You know, you guys should be serious contenders for winning the AFC South. You know, this year and next year. And and moving on to the Raiders, kind of like we said uh, with the with the last game with the Saints, I think the the Raiders just kind of need to, to find that consistent, competent uh, front office. Uh, you know, GM, owner, they need to just find a, a good, reliable, um, steady uh, front office. And I think that starts with, you know, making sure Antonio Pierce is retained. Uh, I think he sets a really good culture for that team, uh, keeps the players really invested and playing hard. So I think retaining Anthony um, Pierce has to be the biggest New Year's resolution and kind of building around his culture and maybe letting him run things because he kind of embodies the the Raiders and uh, how that how they should be ran and how that mentality for that team should be. So I I do think kind of leaning into that mentality would be the 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 biggest kind of just cultural and just from an organizational standpoint. That that's definitely what the Raiders just need bad. They need steadiness. And then on the field, they they just need that quarterback. If they can pull off Jaden Daniels like we did in our mock draft, if they can pull that off, if they can pull off an exciting quarterback here in the first round, it would be it'd be awesome because they're playing really good football right now their defense is playing really good so if they can get quarterback in there with a few more weapons with the stars that they have this team could be really good yeah um i'm just going to kind of tell you so the raiders um only have about 2.8 million dollars in cap space heading into 2024 so their cap situation obviously they're under the cap which is better than some teams but they don't have great cap space and they also signed jimmy garoppolo to a three-year 72.75 million dollar contract that's fully guaranteed. So I was going to say my New Year's resolution was to cut Jimmy Garoppolo, but you can't. So at this point, you know, you got to go out there. You got to get a Michael Penix, a Jaden Daniels if you can. And then, yeah, obviously find clarity and consistency with your coaching staff. You can't be moving on from your coach and your GM or whoever every single season something goes wrong. So you you got to really find that steady presence. And you seem to have something with um, Antonio Pierce as your head coach. So I think, you know, our new year's resolution goal is to retain Antonio Pierce and find a steady quarterback moving forward. And I think you got to do that through the draft, honestly. So that'll be my new year's resolution for them. And, and then obviously once Jimmy Garoppolo's contract is off the books, you know, come 2026, that'll be a huge boost to really improving this roster. Yeah, and I feel like we covered both these teams pretty well. They're pretty obvious uh, resolutions. So we'll go on to the next game. The The Bills beat the Patriots in a, a divisional matchup. So we'll start with the Bills. I think their their biggest New Year's resolution is figuring out what the hell their, their inconsistency problems are. They just need to be more consistent. I don't know if it's a, a from a, from up top, if it's a, a coaching problem, if it's it's not a Josh Allen problem. He's playing hero ball every week. So it's just, it's you got to get, you got to, get things figured out for the bills especially if they if they don't figure things out in the playoffs this year again it's it's going to be a lot of uh talk in in buffalo and bills mafia there's going to be a lot of turmoil and a, a lot of mad fans they're kind of getting fed up right now so i i do think the season is i mean they're already kind of all in so um this season and next season kind of their window and i think you just got to maximize that window as much as you can um get as many stars as as you can, Von Miller hasn't really worked out as a star like he was last year. So I think you just got to get super talent, superstar talent in there. Maybe get Stefan Diggs out of there and then just get some, get something figured out because I, I honestly don't even know what it is with the bills. They, they got to get it figured out. Yeah. It's, it's kind of confusing. It's a head scratcher uh, for the bills. Um, but yeah, I mean, my goal is for the bills is 
figure out how to win a Super Bowl. You are competitive right now. And whether you have to do a mini competitive rebuild, you know, not a full reset rebuild, but a mini competitive rebuild to where you got to go out and whether it's move off of digs, whether it's, you know, move off of Von Miller, which I think is a must at this point, um, unload those contracts and build a more consistent roster. Maybe that's not so star loaded, you know, um, around Josh Allen. Cause I mean, you guys, you're competitive. You have a coach that can win, but yeah, you just can't figure out this consistency. It seems like there is turmoil with Stefan Diggs in the locker room, and yeah, you got you just got to find consistency around Josh Allen because he can't keep carrying this team. I mean, obvi- the fact that the Bills are ten and six right now is ninety five percent because of Josh Allen, and you you know you got you got to help build the team around him and find clarity. And I don't know. I think honestly, maybe it is time for a for a for a competitive um, rebuild for them come twenty twenty four if they don't you know win this Super Bowl. Yeah, I feel like the Bills never really prioritize the right positions. They never prioritize getting Josh Allen's tackles straight. Um, They haven't really prioritized receivers since Stephon Diggs. So I I do think, um, obviously, and improving that defense is kind of a must at this point, too. So I I do think the the, mini reset would be good. Getting, honestly, rid of Stephon Diggs would probably benefit this offense if you could get some more um, just weapons in there, like more versatile, good weapons in there to replace him, I think. That could open up this offense. James Cook has kind of completely opened up this offense. So I think just leaning into more things, trying some new things is, is needed if they can't get it done in the playoffs. And for the Patriots, it's it's obvious. It's it's, it's get Caleb Williams, get Drake May, um, get one of these quarterbacks, and then you're probably back in business. Uh, it looks like Bill Belichick's gone. So it's just figuring out the quarterback and the coach situation. Uh, what, what direction you want to go in. If you want to go a defensive coach or a young offensive coach, I think either way is just – perfectly fine for the Patriots they're going to be in a good spot and I'm optimistic for their future they whatever coach it is is going to be probably getting Drake May to to come into his lineup so I'm not worried about the Patriots at all I'm excited yeah I think yeah our news resolution is is you better you better get one of the two quarterbacks it's 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 Drake May or Caleb Williams or nothing at this point and obviously yeah figure out your coaching situation that's it's that there's probably the most simple new year's resolution is is find a way to get Drake May and they have the worst surrounding talent in the in the NFL. So I guess we will say definitely surround that quarterback with a lot of talent and get him as many weapons as you can because the weapons on this team are just kind of a joke. So uh, the, the, it's kind of clear uh, for these two teams as well. So we'll go on to the next game. The 49ers dominated the Commanders. So we'll start off with the 49ers. I, I think their uh, their uh, 2024 New Year's resolutions are pretty hard because they're they're kind of stacked on every – single element of the roster they're kind of firing on all cylinders right now um, kind of a hard team to to criticize so I, I don't know maybe getting a more offensive line help in there maybe drafting better I feel like John Lynch's biggest flaw is drafting he, he definitely has some weird questionable picks and they're always questionable at the time and they haven't really aged well other than really Jair Brown so yeah I don't know maybe just uh better draft picks and and getting some uh, offensive line help in there yeah I would say um start preparing for Trent Williams you know a contingency plan for when Trent Williams is not there and yeah build that build that offensive line I mean I would say everywhere else on that roster is completely stacked your wide receivers are stacked your running backs stacked every layer of your defense is absolutely stacked um and obviously John Lynch has just proved he can build a team through free agency and he's done an incredible job and then he has hit on some picks. Obviously, he has some questionable picks. As their first pick last year was Jake Moody in the in the third round, a kicker who's honestly not amazing. Um, he's an okay, horrible. I mean, I don't know. Jake Moody's a okay. I guess that was an okay kicker. He kind of sucks. Um, and that was a weird pick. But yeah, I mean, at this point, start preparing for contingency plans on on players that are getting older, and you know, um, and win the Super Bowl. You know, it's. For the writing for the Ravens and the 49ers, it's it's win a Super Bowl and then contingency plans for your older players. Yeah, maybe contingency plans for like a Brandon Ayuk if he was to leave and get a bigger contract, which I could totally see. So, yeah, I agree with that 100%. And for the commanders on the opposite side, it's it's turmoil over there for sure. You've got to get some more competence in that front office. I know they've made some changes, but you just you've got to set a better standard for your 
your organization. So you just got to, you know, start, start over. You've got to get a new quarterback in there. First of all, you've got to pray that you can out duel the Patriots for Drake may. I, I think the Redskins are actually sitting at the number two pick overall right now. So pray that you can stay there, get Drake may um, he'll, he'll help your franchise turn around and yeah, just kind of lean into that, just rebuild, turn this franchise around and, uh, hope that it's uh, built better than it was from the last regime. Yeah, I fire Ron Rivera. That's that's my that's my New Year's goal is let's fire Ron Rivera. Let's move on and you know let's let's get a better organization and culture standpoint for for the for the Commanders. And you know that's that's honestly my biggest takeaway is let's let's get a better culture in here and let's 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 find a winner at, as a coach. Yeah, nuke the organization for Drake May. That's the takeaway for the Redskins, and we'll, we'll go on to the next game. The The Bears kind of dominated the Falcons, so I guess we'll talk about them first. And their their New Year's resolution has to just be figuring out the Justin Fields situation. It's it's became a real, real uh, question now and a real decision now for the Bears. Uh, Justin Fields or Caleb Williams, obviously, it kind of sounds silly to me personally. I'm still taking Caleb Williams. Obviously, as great as Justin Fields has finished the season, he's – He's going to work out somewhere else 100%. I'm confident in that, but I would take Caleb Williams. Personally, I would just take the better quarterback. But, I mean, you can't argue either way because Justin Fields is playing really, really fun, and I think that's kind of just what they need to figure out. Um, the the quarterback will kind of, once they go that direction, they can just um, get him some more weapons, uh, some more offensive line. Maybe a, uh, they're going to retain the coach, so I think it's just yeah, getting more weapons around that that quarterback. But what do you think they should do at quarterback? I don't know. I'll be honest. I'm on the Justin Fields hype train. I think I want Fields, and my New Year's resolution is let's get Marvin Harrison Jr. with the number one overall pick. I don't think we trade out of it. I think we feel confident. We take Marvin Harrison Jr., who is a generational, probably the best wide receiver that's come out of the draft in the last 15 years. Um, and you pair him right there with, with DJ Moore, and you have – maybe the best one, two wide receiver punch in the NFL. And that's what you surra- surround Fields with. Who's really had a resurgence this season. And he's really stepped up big and he proves that he is just electric and dynamic with his feet. And I think he could have kind of like a resurrection to his career um, with passing like a Lamar Jackson. So I, I honestly still think Fields is developing and whether you keep Matt Eberflus or you find an offensive coordinator that you can pair him with that can, you know, I think at this point it's probably time to move off of Matt Eberflus and, a, and to move to a, to an offensive coach, you know, to, to help Justin Fields develop. And I think that would be just awesome. So my new resolution is Marvin Harrison Jr. for this team and don't look back. And I think Fields is a great quarterback. Um, I, I do think it's funny. I, I was, I was seeing rumors that, the Jets would be interested in a trade for Justin Fields if he was to become available, which I just want to throw that out there. It's, that made me kind of laugh. They'd have a, a crazy quarterback room for sure. That would be a stacked quarterback room. Then him and Aaron Rodgers, that would be absurd. Overkill, for sure. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad contingency plan for after Aaron Rodgers. I think Justin Fields could could really thrive, um, whether he went and sat behind Aaron Rodgers for a year and then and then ultimately took over the job when Rodgers decides to retire. I think that would be electric. Yeah, definitely would be electric, no doubt about it. I think I think he could go to the Falcons and be electric, like have them as like contenders almost in the NFC. So, yeah, um, I, I think for the Bears, that yeah, if you want to go that direction, get Marvin Harrison Jr. in there. It, it's really fun. Uh, Fields was playing backyard football with DJ Moore in the snow this game, and they've they really, they've really picked it up here, and Fields is playing some really good quarterbacks. So, yeah, I can't fault the Bears for either direction. I'm just interested to see what way they go, and I, I'm confident they're going to uh, be good moving forward. They're in a really good spot. It's a good problem to have, and uh, for the Falcons, it's it's just figuring out the quarterback position. And it's not going to be Stinky Ritter, who's going to be in the XFL next year. It's not going to be Heineke. I think it's just figuring out the quarterback position and hopefully getting Arthur Smith out there and getting a good offensive coach that can you know kind of mold that quarterback uh whatever quarterback it is you you get russell wilson kirk cousins you're, you're gonna be great you get a you know a rookie in there you're, you're gonna be great you get justin fields i think the falcons are gonna be really really good no matter what if they just get a competent quarterback like that in there with you know uh anyone other than arthur smith calling play so i i am pretty optimistic about the falcons future as well yeah i think yeah my 
and I've been, I think I've been preaching this all season long, especially being a Bijan Robinson fantasy owner in about 10 different leagues. Um, but yeah, let's, let's move. I think it's time to move off of Arthur Smith. I do not think he deserves another chance to be a head coach. Um, I think he might be a fine positional coach or maybe, you know, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator one day, but he is not a head coach. And I think the best thing for this organization is just to fire him as soon as possible. I think it should have been a mid season fire. Honestly, um, I'm surprised he's still a coach. And then, yeah, let's, let's figure out this as my second new year's resolution. Let's figure out our quarterback situation. Let's figure out whether we're going to try and draft. I mean, as of right now, they have the ninth pick. So that's a, a really good position. If you, if you're looking at a Michael Penix or a Jaden Daniels come draft season, we'll see how high those guys end up going, but number nine might land you, might land you a Michael Penix. I don't know after last night and how absolutely incredible Michael Penix was. Maybe it's more of a Jane Daniels at this point um, as the, you know, the fourth quarterback, but this is a really good quarterback class if you're wanting to draft a quarterback, but there's also going to be a Russell Wilson. There's also going to be a Kirk Cousins. There's also going to be, you know, veteran quarterbacks available. So I think it's just time to find a consistent quarterback and, you know, let's, let's find a, let's find an offensive minded you know, head coach that can, that can help develop these, these really young, but yet incredibly talented offensive playmakers as Drake London, Kyle Pitts and Bijan Robinson. Yeah. Just getting a young modern head coach play caller in there would just infinitely boost his team. Like even if they, they kept Heineke, it would infinitely boost his team because they would lean into the stars like Bijan London and Pitts. So I'm confident just getting a modern thinking quarter or not a quarterback, but just play caller in there will be uh, really important. And obviously they're going to get a new quarterback and it's, it's going to be fun. They're going to be competitive, honestly, like com- contenders in the NFC. So really excited for the Falcons and bears, honestly, both uh, looking forward and we'll, we'll go to the next game. The Texans beat the Titans 26 and three. So we'll start with them. And I think it's just filling out this roster. You, it's really hard to find a new year's resolution for the Texans because they've played incredibly. They've exceeded everyone in Earth's ex- expectations, including any Texans fans. So it, it, it's just filling out this roster there that, you know, it, like I said, no one expected the Texans to be this good. It's because of that roster. It's not, it's not perfect on paper. So it's just filling out that roster, maybe, you know, attracting some stars over down to Houston uh, now after this great season to go post CJ Stroud, which they're definitely going to be able to do. They're going to have no, no trouble getting some star talent and free agency to go down and play with CJ Stroud after the season. So just you're optimistic about the Texans. You're, you're so excited and you're just, you're just building on that, building the roster, building off the season. It's, it's so fun. Yeah. Um, the Texans <laughs> are in a really, really good spot. And honestly, they don't have a bunch of, I mean, CJ Stroud is your star, but if you really look at their roster, they don't have those, you know, Nick Bosa, TJ Watt, you know, really Trent Williams type players on this team. Um, I mean, you could argue um, Laramie Tunzel is, and I mean, it'd probably be Laramie Tunzel and CJ Stroud. Those are, those are big guys and Will Anderson. Um, but yeah, I really think that's just nailing my, my, my um, New Year's resolution for the Texans is just going to be nailing free agency and getting some big, you know, star set of players. Cause I mean, the meat of this roster is really, really good. And their receivers are really, really good. You know, it's funny is um, on PFF's um, draft site, it shows the Texans' biggest need as wide receiver and tight end, um, even though I think their wide receiver and tight ends are really, really good. I mean, you're talking about Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, Robert Woods, and Dalton Schultz. Um, that's a really, really incredibly talented um you know, roster from that, from that, um, from that skill set of, of positions. Um, but yeah, you, you could go find yourself, you know, whoever's in free agency, whoever the big names are. I mean, cause I mean, the meat of this roster, like I said, is really fun, but it's, it's just hitting on those, the star players that are ultimately going to take this team over the top. 100%. It's, it's going to be fun to draft best player available. It's going to be a really fun future for the Texans and for the Titans. It's, I think we're both confident. It's kind of similar for the Texans. It's, I think we're both confident in Will Levis. So it's just building around Will Levis, making sure he succeeds, doing everything possible. And that starts with, uh, as you see in this picture, he he goes out with injury again. It's just building that offensive lineup. You've got a great left guard who the Titans are crazy for not putting at left tackle and Skaronsky. You, you need four other positions to build out though. So I think the Titans really need to attack offensive line really bad, like, 
completely attack it like they did it this offseason, this last offseason. They kind of ignored it outside of Dillard and Skronsky. So you've got to attack the offensive line. You've got to attack some more weapons. you got to get some younger weapons in here. It's, it's just Tajay Spears, really, and uh, two really old veterans and Hopkins and Henry. So I, I think it's just um, just draft some more help for Levis. Yeah, I think, yeah, our New Year's resolution to sum it up is build that offense around Will Levis. We need we need an offensive line, whether it's free agency or draft, and we need some talent at wide receiver. Um, you do got a really talented running back that should be fun for many years with Will Levis, with Tajay Spears, but, I mean, Traylon Burks has not really worked out um, this point. DeAndre Hopkins is definitely in the twilight years of his career. Um, Chigo Cuanco is a fine tight end, but – this team needs a lot of help. I mean, really, your cornerstone pieces for your offense, I'll name three. It's Will Levis, Peter Skronsky, and Tajay Spears. Everyone else is disposable, and you gotta you got to rebuild this offense, and you got to rebuild this team um, to help Will Levis succeed and stay healthy. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's honestly simple with both these teams, and we're, we're optimistic. Obviously, the Texans are a little bit brighter than the Titans, but I think we're both uh, pretty excited about Will Levis's future, so hopefully they can just – Get him a better offensive line, some more competency in there. And we'll, we'll go to the next game. The Cardinals went into Philly and beat the Eagles. So we got to talk about the Cardinals first. Really exciting. The, their offseason is going to be really fun. They, I mean, we gave the Bears their uh, their 2024 uh, New Year's resolution and wish list, whatever you want to call it, uh, as Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think for the Cardinals, it can't be anyone other than Marvin Harrison Jr. The way Kyler just played in Philly, if you can get him, Marvin Harrison Jr., those I already know that back shoulder um, fade connection would just be so beautiful between the two. It, Kyler is a really underrated quarterback. I, I think you just need to get him. Uh, if you can't get a Marvin Harrison, you get him, you know, a Joe Alt type of tackle. You you just get Kyler some help. You build around this roster. I think Jonathan Gannon's done a great job. This defense is going to be playing hard. So, yeah, just get more talent on the roster. That's kind of all the Cardinals need, just more talent. Yeah, no, you, that, you said that perfect um and it's going to be interesting i think honestly my new year's um resolution is lose your next game and hope the patriots win you need you want that top three pick because the first two are probably going to somehow figure out how to be quarterbacks and then you want marvin harrison jr whether you know however you can get him you want marvin harrison jr he would absolutely be electric with kyler murray um did you did you see the video of uh their their gm uh Osen Fort or whatever like tweaking on the sideline after they won this game I did. I have not allowed to watch that. There's a bunch of memes. It's like when when you know that you're not getting Marvin Harrison because of this win, and he he was like actually like tweaking on the sideline at the end of the game. It was pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of was the the nail in the coffin. I mean, um, you hate to say it, but oh my gosh! I mean, you just beat the Eagles, which is awesome. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of an electric win, you know, for for a team that's you know you know bottom you know bottom of the barrel um but at the same time it's like oh my gosh you just possibly missed out on a you know blue chip future hall of fame prospect type player in marvin harrison jr so that is absolutely horrendous um but i mean nonetheless it's a cool win you went and beat the 11 and 5 eagles you showed that you're a competitive team but yeah you you need to build around kyler you need to figure out a way to get him more playmakers um obviously if you can't get marvin harrison jr yeah, Joe Alt is staring you right in the face. And, you know, you really can't be mad at getting a solidified, you know, tackle um, for, your, for your quarterback. There's just you, – you can never go wrong with a great tackle prospect. Yeah, I agree. I think it's too early to go another receiver, but you, you can't be mad with a, a Joe Alt type player to protect Kyler. And, yeah, yeah I think the, the Cardinals are just a really fun outlook moving forward. So we'll go to the Eagles. And I, I think for the Eagles, my New Year's resolution is going to be to stop scapegoating your your offensive coordinator every year and just stop scapegoating people i think nick sirianni is getting a little bit overrated at this point he, i don't know what he does because he's an offensive guy but he doesn't call plays so I, I just don't know what sirianni does other than embody a philly type of mentality so i think your new year's resolution is to, to stop scapegoating for the fans their fans are ruthless for no reason uh for a top five offense to be scapegoating the offensive coordinator I, I think your your uh, New Year's resolution is just adding to that defense, fixing the defense, which is the real problem for the Eagles, fixing the secondary. That secondary is, like, historically bad, like one of the worst we've seen in literally years. It's it's really, really 
bad. James Bradbury and Darius Slay have had disastrous seasons. So I, I just think it's it's adding to the secondary. Uh, Sidney Brown is a – it looks like you hit on that pick. That was, he's fun. He's fast. He's, he's a great athlete. So it looks like you hit on that pick. I, I know that, um, you know, they, they, they draft so well, they're going to keep churning out stars. So as long as they can just, you know, throw some darts at the secondary, uh, I, I think that's, that's what they need because Kelly Ringo isn't it. Yeah, I have to give you props for calling out Nick Sirianni last week and, and you know, saying that, you know, Jonathan Gannon and Shane Steichen were kind of the, you know, the two biggest reasons why the Eagles have been so good and competitive and so well coached on each side of the ball. And obviously they lost both of them this year. They went on to get head coaching jobs and it kind of seems like you're right. Um, it kind of seems like obviously it's a very, very, very good team how it's been built around Howie Roseman um, and how he's drafted and signed players on this team. But yeah, Nick Sirianni is, is definitely becoming questionable and it seems like he's getting out coached a lot in it and their defense and their secondary, which you've been pointing out all season as well, is just really getting exposed and it's getting exposed bad to where the Cardinals just put up 35 points. I mean, when you're, when you're the Eagles and you score 31 points, that should be enough to win. Um, but you lost and it, it's a hundred percent because of your secondary and yeah, who knows what Nick Sirianni is even doing at this point. Um, he's it's, it's, it's all kind of questionable, but yeah, I think um, new year's resolution is fix your secondary. Um, Nick Sirianni has got to figure it out. Um, they've been struggling. I mean, they have been, I mean, this, this last month has been absolutely brutal. So it's, figure it out for the playoffs and fix your secondary before it's too late. Those are my, those are my new year's goals and they better happen quick. I mean, this is not a year goal. This is, you know, tomorrow type goal. We need, we need to figure something out moving into the, to the postseason because if you're, if your secondary is going to get exposed this bad by the Cardinals, then these playoff football teams are are going to absolutely torch them. Yeah, it's, it's just not looking good for the playoffs, too. Like, you, another kind of resolution is to not have this team just completely blow up in the locker room and not completely lose the locker room. There's already been reports this morning that A.J. Brown is visibly, like, frustrated in the locker room, and he's, like, visibly uh, defeated, and it's kind of rubbing off the wrong way to the rest of the teammates. So it's just, you know, don't – that's just what you don't want for the Eagles. So, yeah, just preventing that, trying to be better in the playoffs is definitely what they need, and – but we'll go on to the next game. The the Rams uh, barely took care of business against the Giants. So we'll start off with them first. And they're another team kind of like the Cardinals who's just insanely, insanely exceeded expectations. So it's hard to kind of come up with any criticisms for them. It's just excitement really moving forward. I think it's kind of just continuing what you did this offseason. You continue to uh, – not say F them picks. You, you you now say you want them picks and you you hit them picks because they, they've hit a – They've hit stars with fifth round picks two years in a row now, Kyron Williams and Puka Nakua. You you just keep adding on those picks. You keep what doing what you were doing. Uh, I think they they had an underrated free agency. They added a lot of underrated free agents that have kind of been really good for them. So I just think it's it's continuing what you're doing in the front office. Uh, keep hitting on those picks and uh, yeah, just keep building. Hopefully Stafford and Cup can stay healthy and kind of do this for another few more years. Yeah, um, this is this is a hard one. Um, but yeah, I mean. Honestly, just continue building the culture and doing exactly what you're doing is my New Year's resolution is keep your coaching staff. Les Schneid is doing a fantastic job, obviously, at drafting and hitting on late picks. And, yeah, it's just continuing to develop this team. Um, they went through – I mean, they did a full-on reset, rebuild. Um, the Rams did. I mean, really. I mean, they kept a couple of their big players. Obviously, Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, and Cooper Cup all stay on the roster. Um, but other than that, it's kind of been a clean house since then and um it took them really one year and they're back in the playoffs i mean so it's 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 pretty incredible so i mean their new year's resolution is just to stay on the same path you know don't hinder any way hit on those picks and you know they're they're heading in the right direction and next year they who knows they might be com you know competing for a super bowl again um and it's just quite brilliant so i mean retain whoever you can and keep hitting on those picks because i mean this this roster has got a ton of upside yeah, kind of a cop-out from us but yeah just keep doing what you're doing because it's just yeah. insanely fun what they're doing and, and we couldn't do what they're doing they're doing a great job so uh we'll, we'll move on to the giants and i think uh the giants it's it's just figuring out that quarterback position it's very up in the air it seems like danny dimes is going to be back but 
I think my New Year's resolution is just having Brian Dable pick the quarterback that he wants and roll with the quarterback that he wants and mold his offense and team around the quarterback that he wants. If he wants a veteran, if he wants a rookie, then he should definitely not have any allegiance to Danny Dimes, DeVito, uh, Tyrod Taylor. He should definitely go for a quarterback. I think that's kind of what this team needs. They, they've been lacking weapons as well. They do need to add some talent, um, you know, kind of all around the roster, but mostly maybe one more offensive lineman, uh, a few more receivers. I, I think their biggest need, though, is quarterback. I think Danny Dimes isn't really it, and I think they need to figure out someone more uh, dynamic. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy from the Giants' standpoint of things is they have, um, as we speak right now, the uh, fifth overall pick, and um, yes, PFF does have the Giants as their biggest need is quarterback. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Danny Dimes is their guy. Um, obviously, they just gave Danny Dimes a bag. Um, they kind of committed to him, which is tough. Um, I don't know what the out is and when there's an out for his contract. Um, but I mean, arguably, it is kind of a tough position right now for the Giants because three of the first five, or I mean. Four of the first five teams, including the Giants, are quarterback needy teams. So, I mean, they could be in play for a Michael Penix or a Bo Nix or Jaden Daniels where they're at. Um, and maybe they fall in love with a guy like that. So, uh, my New Year's resolution, it's, I mean, it kind of seems like another cop out um, and not very creative, but it's, yeah, it's, it's figure out your quarterback position and figure out which direction you want to build your team in. Um, we got to get some more clarity. Obviously, you got to, and maybe it's, Honestly, do another might at this point might be another reset, another little mini competitive rebuild and figure out who your quarterback is. I mean, that's kind of my thing. It's just I don't have much clarity. I'm it's kind of tough. I mean, the Giants need a lot of positions. Um, Darren Waller seems to be washed. Their receiving core is probably bottom five in the NFL right now. I mean, they do have some some you know good players and Saquon Barkley and Thibodeau. Um, I think they have some good secondary pieces with Julian Love. Um, or excuse me, sorry, Julian Love is now on the Seahawks. <laughs> Xavier McKinney. Yes, Xavier McKinney. Um, but I mean they do have some okay pieces. Um, but yeah, it's I think it might be time to say it might be another rebuild time. It might be, you know, scratch the big contracts off if you can and and let's figure out who we really like and and who Brian DeBall really likes and who he wants to build around. But yeah, it's honestly, let's figure out this quarterback is, is my, is my resolution. You know, I think you kind of figured out the good resolution. It's just, yeah. Figuring out what Dable wants. Cause he kind of inherited this team. So it's just, um, I, I would do a mini little reset, a mini little rebuild um, that kind of started with Leonard Williams. I would keep that going. And it's just this quarterback position. When you look at this roster, it's just, it's it's glaring it's just not going to get you over the hump um it, it's it's something that they really need to upgrade so hopefully they go that direction it'll be interested to see what they do with that position because that's kind of going to be the domino that leads to the rest of their offseason but we'll go on to the next game the jaguars dominated and shut out the panthers so we'll start out uh with the jaguars i think their biggest um resolution would be finding consistency as well they're one of those teams that has all the potential in the world, but they just can't find the consistency to be a, a top juggernaut, kind of similar to the Bills. And yeah, I, I think it's just kind of filling in those holes. Um, Trevor needs to get healthy and, and definitely improve. He's had a rough season. So yeah, it's just honestly kind of a cop out as well, nothing creative, but it's just, I think their roster is really good. I think they have a good coaching staff in place. It's just kind of figuring things out. Uh, Trevor needs to take a jump up and, the, the big jump that we're all expecting to because we kind of all look at him as like an alien to your quarterback. So I think, yeah, Trevor's just kind of got to play that way and then maybe you got to get a few more, you know, star talent in there. But I think the Jaguars are kind of hard because they're, they're, they're a good team. I don't know what's wrong with them. Yeah, no, the Jaguars have, um, are a definition of an emotional roller coaster this season. And Trevor's kind of been an emotional roller coaster. And yeah, we, we kind of want to put Trevor Lawrence in this alien tier, this this blue chip prospect, you know, this Peyton Manny type prospect coming out of high school and college. Um, but yeah, I think Trevor Lawrence, um, I think my New Year's resolution is for Trevor Lawrence to just find out how to be consistent and find out how to play consistent football and I don't know. I mean, Trevor Lawrence can have games where he throws four touchdowns and it was perfect pass rating. And then I'll have a game where he throws four interceptions and nothing can go right. So 
Um, I mean, I do appreciate his gunslinger mentality of where when, when it's bad, he doesn't care. He's going to keep taking those shots. And so I really do like that kind of like Brett Favre style mentality. But at the same time, he's got to be a little bit smarter. He's got to make bit better decisions and he's got to limit the turnover. So I just I just want to see better, you know, less hero ball from Trevor Lawrence. And I just want to find that consistency. And I want to see Trevor Lawrence take that next step up next year. Yeah, just kind of clean things up. I agree. I think that's kind of the main thing for the Jags, something crazy. And for the Panthers, it's it's clear and obvious when you watch this team. It's just surround this guy, Bryce Young, with as much help as you can because he has zero right now. And you get him weapons. You get him as many linemen as you can. You, you, you Your defense is honestly playing pretty good if you get a few more pieces in there. And I'm not really worried about the Panthers' defense. It's really just surrounding that offense with talent and getting Miles Sanders' contract out of there, just, just injecting more – young talent to develop with Bryce Young in there. And I guess the other main one is just figuring out that coach to kind of compliment Bryce Young to help develop Bryce Young, to help him reach his potential and just help mold his team around Bryce Young. So that's that's the main thing is just figuring out the the path they want to go with Bryce Young and what coach compliments him the best. I'm I'm confident that they'll figure it out. I think Bryce Young's just a great kid. He's gonna I think he's gonna be great. Yeah, I think Bryce Young's got all the potential in the world. Um uh, I think honestly, my New Year's goal for these guys is if Ben Johnson's asking for 15 million, you pay him 20. Um, I think you got to get somebody like Ben Johnson. I think Ben Johnson, I think it might be honestly for the Panthers, Ben Johnson or nobody at this point. Um, you got to throw the bag, you got to do whatever you can to entice Ben Johnson to come into Carolina, and you got to help Bryce Young, you got to surround him with talent, whatever. You know, whatever you can, wide receiver wise, you got to find him a star, whether it's via free agency, whether I mean, you got to build through free agency and the draft. You you got to you got to you got to put all your chips in, in the basket for offensive um, players in free agency and the draft. And you got you got to build this team around Bryce Young. And honestly, yeah, it's it's throw the bags at, at Ben Johnson for me. That's that's my biggest goal. You find a way to get Ben Johnson on the Panthers. All right, Panthers 2024 New Year's resolution is Ben Johnson, and we'll we'll go on to the next one. Uh, the the Steelers went into uh, Seattle and beat the Seahawks. So I guess we'll start with the Seahawks. I'm pretty speechless by that. Uh, that was a that was a good road win, honestly, by Mason Rudolph. The Steelers played some good football, so I don't know the the Steelers are honestly like one of the more questionable like teams for this offseason. They have a lot of different directions they can go. I. I feel like Mike Tomlin will stay, so it's kind of just figuring out that quarterback position. Kenny, Kenny Pickett's healthy, and they have kind of benched him for Mason Rudolph, so that is obviously a real question moving into the future. You're not going to be wanting to start your seasons uh, with Mason Rudolph as your number one uh, plan A quarterback, so that's just that's going to be a, a, something they have to figure out. They, they kind of miss on that first-round pick, obviously, with Kenny Pickett, so it's it's got to be quarterback with the Steelers. They've got a pretty good roster all around. Obviously, they can fill it out, um, but they they always draft well. They've drafted some stars recently, and Joey Porter Jr., Keanu kind of Benton. So I, I'm really just wanting to figure out the quarterback upgrade on Kenny Pickett because I think we all kind of knew Kenny Pickett wasn't it, and that's why they have Mason Rudolph in right now, but we know who he is. So Yeah, this is, this is a tough one because um, I don't feel like the Steelers – should be in this position where they are competitive. Um, and they're, and I sure as hell don't think their record should be nine and seven at this point in the season. Um, it's kind of incredible. Um, and there has been rumors um, that this could be the end of Mike Tomlin in, in Pittsburgh, but I think that would be the stupidest thing the Steelers could do. Um, you, you retain Mike Tomlin, you keep him, you give him a lifetime contract. It doesn't matter. Um that's definitely a goal. I don't know why those rumors are spinning around, but there is rumors that Mike Tomlin um, career could be coming to an end, which would be the most wild thing to me because this he's the only reason they have nine wins. And quite frankly, they shouldn't have nine wins. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's gosh, this is, this is just hard for me. Um, I think I really do think it is time to move on from these quarterbacks. And I honestly, my, my new year's resolution is, Honestly, for for the Steelers, you you clean house of your quarterbacks and you go get yourself. Um, if you want to just do a teeny competitive rebuild, you go get a Russell Wilson. You go get a Kirk Cousins. You let them 
you let him and, you know, Russell Wilson and Mike Tomlin, you know, run the Steelers team with an always competitive defense, you're all of a sudden a serious, honestly, Super Bowl contender, in, in my opinion. Um, I think Russell Wilson with Mike Tomlin would be incredible. He's going to be available. Kirk Cousins could be available. You get a quarterback like that. You have um, you have a Deontay Johnson. You have a George Pickens. You have, you know, some pretty okay running backs. You 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 know you've invested in your offensive line. You've you've got great tight ends. Your defense is always solid. So let's let's go get a veteran quarterback. Why not? Let's 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 go through a mini competitive rebuild and let's immediately go for a Super Bowl. Let's get a Russell Wilson. Let's get a Kirk Cousins. So that's my New Year's resolution goal. Yeah, I, I like that. I think you nailed it with the Steelers. I think it's just the main thing has to be keeping Mike Tomlin, who's who's carried this team for years. He's He's a game changer coach. So yeah, I think Mike Tomlin and getting a, a Russ type quarterback in there would be a dream for the Steelers. It would make them a really scary team, honestly. So yeah, I think that would just be a dream. You just laid out a dream offseason plan for them. Hopefully they can follow that blueprint. And, and for the Seahawks, it's it's interesting. I feel like there's not I, I really like the Seahawks roster. I think they're obviously they gotta um, fill in some offensive line interior spots. But other than that, I think it's just getting like a high upside quarterback in here to maybe back up Gino for a year, getting a, I don't know, last year's Anthony Richardson. A lot of people mocked to the Seahawks. I don't know this year's Michael Penix before last night, before his uh, stock rose so much. So I don't know, just, just a high upside quarterback behind Gino to kind of, you know, um, replace him and have a lot of upside with all these insane uh, receivers and kind of talent the Seahawks have. So I think it's just, I, I think that might be their only need, honestly. Yeah, I just want to say something real quick about Penix. Um, in last night's game against Texas, it was pretty much as great as CJ Stroud against Georgia's game is how perfect uh Michael Penix played. So I mean, I think his draft stock um moving forward could be as high as number three. So um that game was 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 damn near flawless. And um, you know, I know a lot of hopeful teams, you know, were thinking they could get Penix in the, you know you know, the teens. And I think that is now a pipe dream. And I think we can see Michael Penix as a lock for top 10 and as high as honestly, number three. Yeah, honestly, unfortunate as like a Seahawks or like a Bronco fan who, who wanted Penix a Vikings fan. It's honestly unfortunate after, after last night, how good he did. I knew he was going to be good, but I, I didn't want to stock to rise this much. It's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely wild. And yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head with the, with the Seahawks. Um, I think, yeah, I don't think Geno Smith is your franchise guy. Um, the way they actually set up Geno Smith's contract is very brilliant and very smart. Um, so they do have an out, and they, they don't have much of a, a of a dead cap hit from Geno Smith this year. So if they want to get out of this Geno Smith contract, they can very easily. Um, they want to keep him. They can, you know, for, for a bridge quarterback. So I think it's time, yeah, to whether it's, you know, we find a different quarterback via free agency. We find a little bit more consistent presence. We 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 build around a young quarterback, which would probably be the dream. I mean, I wouldn't even mind um, for where the Seahawks are picking at this point a Bo Nix. I think a Bo Nix could could be an exciting prospect um, and somebody you know who could sit behind Geno for a year and ultimately be the franchise quarterback um, possibly for this team. So yeah, I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head and I think it's find your clarity with quarterback is our, is our new year's goal. Yeah. I mean, the Seahawks don't have like a, a glaring need or anything. I think that is kind of just the direction you need to go. Maybe figure out the Pete Carroll future, but, but we'll go on to the next game. The chiefs, the run first chiefs beat the Bengals and they kind of won this game on the ground, by the way, uh, by by their superstar, Isaiah Pacheco. So I, I guess for the Chiefs, their 2024 New Year's resolution is staying away from Pacheco in the run game. You you keep the run game the same. But I think it's just attacking that passing game, getting way – injecting way more dynamism into that offense. You need a, a lot more receiving talent. You need real receivers. Um, obviously, Rashi Rice was a great pick. They hit on that pick. You can lock him in as a wide receiver one type wide receiver two um, but you're going to need more um, to be a real you know contender in the AFC I, I really don't think the Chiefs are contenders in the AFC right now it's crazy as it sounds so I think you you need just more um, on offense with Travis Kelsey kind of say what you want about Travis Kelsey he's still a top tight end in the NFL but he he's just not that same dynamic superstar he, like a 
wide receiver one type impact. Um, and Mahomes clearly isn't as confident in himself and the offense uh, because of that. So, yeah, I think it's just more dynamism um, for that team. Yeah, kind of wild. Um, Travis Kelsey was, let's see, one, two, three, four. He was tied for their fourth um, leading receiver in this game. He was actually behind tight end Noah Gray. He had three for 16, and Noah Gray had three for 17. So, um, obviously, something's, something's wrong with the Chiefs. Um, they are the run first Chiefs. This offense runs through Isaiah Pacheco. Rashi Rice seems to be the number one target in this offense. And, yeah, they need more explosiveness they need better receivers they need a better offense and yeah that's pretty much going to be the goal um moving forward into 2024 is is obviously whether it's draft or free agency um you go get better receivers for patrick mahomes because this offense is is pretty stagnant and pretty dull kind of this and i have no confidence of them being able to win a playoff game this year, which is crazy. And for the Bengals, for me, it's just re- retaining your main free agents. Uh, DJ Reader is a free agent. Uh, T. Higgins is a free agent. J- Jadobia Wuzia, even. I, I think it's just retaining that big three. Um, keeping Jonah this- Williams. Maybe, maybe Jonah Williams. Uh, I'm not as worried about Jonah Williams, but I mean, if you could retain a, a right tackle, you're not going to be mad about it. Um, I think you could upgrade there, honestly, but. Yeah, um, just retaining these pieces, retaining this team you sold, you know, the the naming rights to your stadium so you could retain players like T. Higgins. So I I think you just kind of keep this team in place, get Joe Burrow back next year, build on it a little bit, and I I think you kind of just run things back uh, because this team's great. Yeah, no, you just said it exactly how I said uh, how I would have put it is um, our New Year's goal is to run things back. We gotta we gotta retain T. Higgins. We gotta um, we gotta definitely retain uh dj reader um we got we got to at least get our, our our top dogs back and then we got to hit in the draft and build a little bit more depth um i definitely be looking for a little bit more offensive line help and like you said if you can upgrade from jonah williams that would be fantastic keep joe keep joe burrow upright and yeah it's, it's pretty much just run it back and even if you can um, retain your most of your coaching staff that would be fantastic too because i know a lot of teams are going to try and poach from the Bengals. Yep, and I mean, not nothing too much to take away from both these teams. They're going to be positive outlooks, and they're going to be right back into things next season. Uh, especially the Bengals, I'm excited for Burrow to get back. But we'll go on to the next game. the The Broncos beat the Chargers in the NFL Seekers Bowl. So we'll talk. We'll talk about the Broncos first. I think their obvious their uh, biggest New Year's resolution is pretty obvious at this point. It's uh, Sean Payton kind of made made it obvious. It's quarterback. You got to figure out who you're replacing Russell Wilson with because he's made it obvious he's not moving forward with Russell Wilson as the Broncos quarterback. So I think it's pray to God that Penix falls to you in the first round. If not, um, Bo Nix seems like a Bronco, if I'm being honest. He seems like a Sean Payton guy, if I'm being honest. So maybe you go that route. Um, I don't. I think Jane Daniels would be a pipe dream, so I think it's kind of down to those two. Uh, I don't know. What, what would your uh, New Year's resolution be for my Broncos? Yeah, that's it's kind of a tough one. Um, all of a sudden, it seems like the Broncos in the last like three weeks have just so like it couldn't have been more of a turnaround than what we expected the Broncos moving forward. I mean, the Broncos were playoff hopefuls, um, borderline, you know, hoping to hoping to sneak in there. And honestly, we're looking on the on the you know the right side up. I mean, it was it was trending positive, and all of a sudden, that Patriots loss just changed the entire dynamic and aspect of the Broncos and just turned it into, all right, this is like, we're going to, we're going to, we're getting rid of Russ. I honestly think, I don't know how much longer Jerry Judy will be a Bronco for. Um, it seems like, yeah, it seems like Sean Payton's now it's, um, he tried to roll one season with this um, team that uh, George Payton put together. And now it's time for him to pretty much build this team. I think Sean Payton is now the GM and I think it's now 2024 is, is, let me build the team how I want to build it. And so, yeah, and obviously it's you, you, you pray to God that you can get one of these, you know, top four quarterbacks and whether that's trading up and getting one, whether one miraculously falls to you, you go get one of these top dogs. Yeah. I think Sean Payton's going to make sure he, things are ran his way. Uh, he gets his quarterback. He gets his roster uh, the way that he wants it this year. If he has to trade up, he'll do it. Um, Sean Payton's a pretty reckless guy. He'll do anything uh, for, 
his guy. So I am just interested to see who it is because as a Broncos fan, I have zero clue uh, if if Sean Payton, uh, obviously there's a long way to go. If he likes Penix the most, if he likes Bo Nix the most, it's going to be interesting to see who Sean Payton likes. It could be Baker Mayfield. It could be someone totally random. So uh, interested to see what the Broncos do. I would say their second one would be CB2. I think you need to add a, a starting corner opposite of Patrick Sertan. It's, I would say it's our biggest need. Um, and then, uh, yeah, replace Judy, get some more weapons in there. And for the Chargers, um, I, it's just head coach. I mean, your, your dream option is, you know, the Ben Johnson, the Jim Harbaugh. If you can get one of those juggernaut head coaches to completely change your culture around, I think that's the biggest benefit for the Chargers. The biggest uh, New Year's resolution for the Chargers is changing the culture, changing the the mentality of the players. I think just, yeah, I think maybe a, just a hard-nosed coach could really uh, help this Chargers team. Yeah, no, it really is. It's It's changing – the way the people view you as a football team. Um, it's changing the the narrative behind who you are as a football team, that you're too cheap, um, that you'll never pay for a head coach, that you will always end up charging at the end of the year. Um, and so, yeah, it's just changing the narrative and it's changing the culture. And that's the, that's the biggest New Year's takeaway. And obviously, um, as a Charger fan, and I know most other Charger fans are feeling – um, everyone's kind of in it, Jim Harbaugh. And especially after watching that Michigan Alabama game, I think people are even more excited. And so, I mean, at this point, everyone wants that culture change. They, they we want a, you know, a dominant leader of men head coach. And, and honestly, it really seems to be Jim Harbaugh and whether, you know, everyone's talking themselves into believing it or not, he seems to be the guy right now. There seems to be mutual interest um, there's definitely a lot of smoke going around, but yeah, it's, it's, it's get Jim Harbaugh and you change the culture of this team. And, you know, you change the narrative of, of losing by three points of, of choking at the end of the game. It's just, it's, it's changed this culture and, you know, 2024 has to be the year. And I honestly think a mini reset would be another one for the Chargers as well. Just a little bit mini rebuild to maybe get some of these superstars out of their, uh, older aging superstars to get some more just roster depth in there, uh, fill out the roster a little bit more uh, evenly. And um, yeah, I think you kind of build with their, your cornerstone pieces like Herbert, um, Rashawn Slater, Alohi Gilman. I honestly think every other piece is somewhat expendable for the Chargers. I think you kind of just, you really uh, attack just kind of a new mentality, uh, just building around Justin Herbert and whatever um, that new, that new coach is, if it's a, offensive guy yeah, obviously he'll he'll bowl that team around herbert so yeah it's just kind of figuring out that that new coach and uh maybe filling out that roster a little bit better yeah and i put it into perspective like you keep you start keeping your alohi gilvins and you move on from your joey bosa and mike and mike williams type players you you start building out the meat of your roster um and you know obviously the chargers look so good on paper the last couple of years but when you know when you're you're two of of the dudes you pay 30 plus million dollars a year to go down it's like that's your star talent you don't have you you have no money to invest in depth in your roster and so you know you got to start figuring out better contracts and and really keeping that meat and potatoes of your roster you know um it's it's been too star studded for too long and obviously they've been very unlucky with injuries on those star players and so it's just time to build out a better roster um, from top to bottom and, and have depth. You know, your, your, your second string and your third string guys have got to come in here and be competitive and they have not had that. Yeah. I think we both think the chargers kind of started the season off or this off season off with the good uh, start with the axing of Telesco and Brandon Staley. I think uh, just moving on from that, getting new modern thinking pieces in there will be huge for the chargers and, we will go on to the last game, the, the Sunday night football game. The Packers went in there and kind of dominated the Vikings. So we'll we'll talk about the Packers first. Uh, Jordan Love has just been playing some great football. You're obviously very optimistic about Jordan Love as your future quarterback. You, you build around him moving forward. Uh, he's the highest graded quarterback in the NFL since week 12, by the way, with like a 90 PFF grade, like the majority of the second half of the season. So he's playing just some great football. He's third in the NFL in touchdowns. So and you're the youngest team in the NFL, might I add. So I just think it's just just adding to this season, even if you don't make the playoffs, which is like you will uh, after that big win. So I think you're just really happy for the the youngest team in the NFL. You you keep adding to Jordan Love's confidence. You you build on him. You 
fire Joe Barry, get a more competent defense in there. That Packers defense is a problem, but all the all the offensive options for the Packers that are so young, I'm so excited for. Uh, maybe you get a new running back in there to kind of replace Aaron Jones when he's done. But all these receivers, Jaden Reed, uh, Tucker Craft, Luke Musgrave, Christian Watson. I mean, it, it's just it's so fun. I mean, Bo Melton goes in there and he inserts and really balls for them. Dontavian Wicks is balling at Romeo Dobbs. They have so many young talents that are just complimenting Jordan Lovewell. So I think it's really just just keep drafting well, keep um, adding to that defense and fire Joe Barry. I think the defense is what needs to work on. Yeah, you couldn't have said that any better. Um, yeah, I think the defense is definitely the the weak spot of the roster at this point. And whether I don't, I, I know they do have a lot of good talent. Um, but yeah, I think Joe Barry might be the ultimate crutch. And so, yeah, let's go out there and you find yourself a, a great competitive defensive coordinator and you continue to build this team. I mean, the fact that you're the youngest team um, in the NFL and you're making the playoffs is is pretty incredible, honestly, at this point. So you really couldn't ask for much more. It's just continue to develop. Um, you have so many young pieces on offense and these guys are only going to get better. And, you know, the future and the outlook is is super bright for the Packers. Yeah, and when you go to the Vikings, it's – I mean, Jaron Hall was bad, bad in this game. Let's get it out of the way. Jaron Hall was really bad. So it's it's just figuring out the quarterback position. If you keep Kirk Cousins, I'm not going to fault the Vikings at all. Uh, for another season, if you want to run it back with Kirk Cousins, he was playing like MVP, MVP football before he got hurt this year. So I'm not going to fault the Vikings for um, bringing Kirk Cousins back. If they do, I could totally see it happening. But if they don't, if they go with a more exciting young route, if they draft a Michael Penix, then this Vikings team, uh, the, the sky's the limit for the future. So I, I honestly think either direction the Vikings go on offense, it's it's kind of going to be a, a win-win. And I think maybe your biggest dream uh, would be keeping Brian Flores, hoping that he somehow doesn't get a head coaching job because he has transformed this defense. Like you were saying, they were kind of like a bottom five defense the last few years. So I, I don't want to know what they would go back to if, if Brian Flores left after one season. So I, I do uh, I think you, you kind of want to keep things in place here. If you, if that means keep, keeping her cousins, that's fine with me, but I, I just think you want to, um, kind of keep things in place and, and keep drafting, um, get some more picks in there, get some younger players in there, uh, kind of age out the the veterans like Harrison Smith. And uh, yeah. Yeah, no, um, that's, that's a, that's a really great point you just made there with all that. Um, but yeah, the Vikings, honestly, it kind of feels like, you know, their season was kind of robbed from them after losing Kirk Cousins. And so, yeah, at this point, if you can retain a Brian Flores, if you want to run it back with Kirk Cousins, I have no problem with that. Um, you have two incredible wide receivers in Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson. You have an incredible tight end. You have one of the best left tackles in the NFL in Christian Derisaw. Um, Brian Flores has just turned this defense into, you know, one of the top defenses in the NFL um, in just one year. And so, yeah, if you can run it back and then add, you know, some some of your key pieces um, through the draft, you know, build off of that, maybe find a more consistent running back, a guard, a better center, um, and then, yeah, age out, you know, get younger in the secondary. And, yeah, I, I'd have no problem, you know, with the Vikings running it back. And, yeah, honestly, I would try and retain. I think the biggest New Year's goal is throw the bag at Brian Flores, try and retain him for another season, and depending on what you do with Kirk Cousins, yeah, run it back. There's there's no reason you shouldn't. And if not, just go for a high high upset option like Penix because we know. But just just imagine Penix's <laughs> deep balls to to Justin Jefferson and and Jordan Addison. Um, yeah, Bo Nix would be fun for the Vikings. I I, I do think either way, um, the Vikings will be fine. They have so many um, building cornerstones on that offense to build around. So. Really exciting for the Vikings. Really, really fun talking about all this. It went pretty long. We're, we're kind of off-season nerds. We love talking about the off-season. Really excited for it. But um, anything else you want to say? Any hot takes or anything before we get out of here? Um, gosh, <laughs> I'll just I'll get a, I'll get a hot. Well, it's not really a hot take. Um, but I'll just say my Super Bowl prediction right now, and it's obviously the Ravens. I th honestly think I'm going to go Ravens, and I'm going to say. The Cowboys miraculously make it to the Super Bowl, and the Ravens destroy them. That's um, that's my that's my bold prediction right there. That is a hot take because I I don't think the Cowboys are making, but I I do love uh, you picking the Ravens. You kind of have to pick the Ravens right now. They're the best team in the NFL. This is the MVP right here. He secured it. We can put it in as an MVP lock. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 secure it. We'll put it in as our lock of the week, lock of the year, whatever it is. 
Lamar Jackson's MVP. So congrats to him. A really fun episode. Thanks for tuning into the NFL Seekers podcast. Like, subscribe if you liked. And yeah, peace. Peace.